You mentioned living a drug-free life, and that certainly does not fit into the stereotype of a rock and roll star, especially a guy like you, the music that you played, and you see so many people, uh, the effects of drugs that have taken them down. You had some great lines about that during the program with Sarah Palin on Sportsman Channel. Uh, Tell us how you've been able to avoid uh, falling into those pitfalls, because we see guys who aren't with us anymore and others who still are, but you take a look at them and you see how the, you know, the effects that drugs have had on them. How have you been able to stay clean? Well, you know, I was raised in a, in just a powerfully loving and disciplined, the big D, disciplined family environment. My mom, Mary and Dorothy Nugent, my, my, my drill sergeant dad, literally, uh, Warren Henry Nugent, they would have kicked my ass if I just smoked or drank, much less do drugs or anything. So that discipline stayed with me, but it was the, the pragmatism of wanting to make great music, soulful music like my heroes Chuck Berry and James Brown and Wilson Pickett and Bo Diddley and everybody, Motown. And when I saw the hippies, the drooling, stumbling, puking, dying, zombie, high hippies all around me, I knew my dad was right. And I knew that it was already difficult for me, Kevin, to really play good Chuck Berry licks, you know, as good as some of the other guitar players. So I needed to have a higher level of awareness, not a reduced level of awareness. And then you take that to my highest of highs, which is the mystical flight of the arrow, and try to sneak up on a wary white-tailed deer. And I knew that I couldn't possibly succeed at getting venison if I was drunk or stoned. And and again, it's just so pragmatic. I mean, who would you want stoned in your life? Your children's teacher? Your mechanic? Your pilot? <laughs> would you want your your welder to be stoned? I mean, you got to be kidding me. Stoned is for losers. Stoned is for people who disrespect their gifts from God, who want to throw away their gifts from God. And I succinctly nailed it many, many years ago because so many of these great musicians were my heroes. And I, I mentioned that, you know, Jimi Hendrix got high and Jimmy's dead. I went hunting, and I'm still Ted. I've been clean and sober my whole life. I get high on Mrs. Nugent's essence and the mystical flight of the arrow into the pump station of unsuspecting herbivores, if I'm so lucky. You know, unfortunately, doesn't that speak even more to the hate that you get, though, from the left and others? Because here you are spreading this unbelievable message that people won't look through the uh, first part that they want to bash, that here you are living a clean life when so many of these celebrities and stars that kids see and and unfortunately look up to today, you know, it's a do-whatever-you-want society message from them. Here they are on drugs. But if they're anti-hunting and vegetarians, they're okay. Meantime, Ted Nugent here, real great message, a family guy, not not only when you were a child, but now as a husband and as a father, a guy who's been clean, a guy who's living a great life and using all the resources as God intended them to be used, yet you get slammed for hunting. And then someone else, if they speak out, say, you know, against hunting, they could be on drugs or, you know, have problems up the wazoo, but, you know, they're okay in their eyes of the media. Well, Kevin, it's 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 so ugly. It's so dishonest. It's really soulless and quite honestly brain dead. I mean, there are great, great um, monsters of talent in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, many of which I literally revere for their what they enriched our lives with, from Paul McCartney to Bo Diddley and Chuck Berry and James Brown and Wilson Pig and all the Motown and the Four Tops and the Temptations. I mean, you name them, and the Kinks and the Yardbirds. Are you kidding me? I could go on and on with a, a list of gods of soulful music. But it... There's also a bunch of people in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame that are heroin addicts, that died of heroin overdoses. That, uh, and again, I'm not condemning people, um, except that uh, choices um, have consequences. Uh, and the only reason I'm not in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is because I'm on the board of directors of the National Rifle Association. Mm-hmm. Case closed. Yep. And and you know I don't I'm not. <laughs> I'm not hurt by that, and I'm not offended by that. I just, not on a personal level, I just think it's disrespectful to Bo, to Bo Diddley and Chuck Berry. It's disrespectful that someone takes a political slant. But let's let's really be honest. Who started the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? Jan Wenner, the the publisher and owner uh, emeritus of Rolling Stone magazine, which is one of the largest donators to anti-hunting and animal rights and anti-gun insanity. So I don't think a guy who's had some of the highest votes in the history of the NRA on the board of directors 
is going to chum up with those folks. But isn't that sad? Because it should be about the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, the soul of the music. And with the unbelievably gifted musicians I've been blessed to collaborate with for the last 50 years, God knows my music qualifies. This is the 40th year anniversary of my uh, Ted Nugent solo album, and I've sold 40 million records. And I'm, I'm not bragging here, but I'm just talking about the, in, the inconsistency and the dishonesty that exists out there. But when I have all these votes on the board of directors of the NRA, and I had the greatest tour of my life with Shut Up and Jam in 2014, and I'm about to make a new record this next winter, and I'm going to go out in 2016 with these unbelievable musicians having so much fun, it ain't right. I know that I'm on the right course, and I've got the real Rock and Roll Hall of Fame votes because that's the, the, the not-so-mean streets of this country who cheer my band on, and they just dance like savage animals every night, and I couldn't be happier except for the dishonesty that exists on the left. So we pray for them, and we hope they wake up. But if they don't, I'll be rock and roll and eating backstraps. I guarantee you that. Well, listen, we've seen a lot of politics in many halls of fame, whether it be sports or music. I know Chubby Checker has had a battle with the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and kind of like kind of told them to stick it last year i think so isn't that crazy yeah, it really is i mean you know it's really a, a shame a, ki- a child who's never you know seen the man or heard them you know knows the name and you know they, but they you know they put politics into all of this we know this i want to talk uh briefly before we let you go and thank you so much for spending so much time with us today um your camp camp for kids ted nugent camp for kids uh, people probably don't know about this either a lot of folks tell us about it and i mean this has been going strong for quite a while now what 25 years yeah you mean there's a, a ted nugent camp for kids feature in rolling stone magazine where we teach kids to be clean and sober be the best that they can be and be resource stewards and environmentally aware and be conscientious consumers that there's not a story in rolling stone magazine about that 25 years over 16,000 kids graduated are you kevin you expect me to believe that rolling stone magazine hasn't done a cover story in the ted nugent camp for kids are you is that what you're telling me you'd think i'm thumbing through it we might be in the back here somewhere let me get the uh <laughs> get the magnifying glass out well you know uh again I, i'm surrounded by such phenomenal people such loving giving generous brilliant positive people our ted nugent camp for kids was created in 1989, just after the death of Fred Bear, my hero, a great, great, great visionary conservationist and gentleman, and probably the greatest bow hunter that ever walked the, the earth, this side of Cochise and Robin Hood, maybe better. And uh, Fred told me on our last hunt together in October of 1988 um, that he really appreciated the way that I promote hunting and conservation and a clean lifestyle with the rock and roll edge, shall we say, and he didn't, wasn't so sure of it at the beginning, back in the 60s and 70s. But he started to realize that I really had an impact on young people with the message of being clean and sober and the discipline of the mystical flight of the arrow and the hands-on conservation. So we started the Ted Nugent Camp for Kids, the 501c3, nonprofit, 100% volunteer charity to teach kids hunter safety and to be clean and sober and be the best that they can be, to be an asset to their family, and that the mystical flight of the arrow will make you a better student. It will make you a better citizen. That being aware of your impact on the environment and learning how to to be a safe gun handler and learn how to fish and learn how to prepare your own meals and learn why Thanksgiving is towards the end of the hunting season because we give thanks to God for his annual renewable pantry. And a lot of the kids, and I said, you know, 16,000, I think, is what we've graduated. And we have them in Iowa, Colorado, Nebraska, and South Dakota. And I'm going to tell you, it's not me. It's the volunteers. I have an army of volunteers in those four states. And we did it for years in Michigan, so I want to make sure I thank them as well. But right now in those four states, they've literally changed people's lives, not just the kids. But the families, the brothers and sisters and the the moms and dads and uncles and aunts and grandmas and grandpas come to the camp. And I attend as many of them as I possibly can. I attend most of them over the years. But for 25 years now, uh, we've been teaching kids about the spirit about responsibility and accountability and conscientious consumerism and, and, and being, being a benefit, an asset to the environment by putting more back than we take. And i I, I got to tell you, 
that I'm just carrying on what Fred Bear and my my mom and dad and what so many parents have taught so many families for so many uh, generations. Uh, so the real credit goes to those volunteers. And Shikar, Shikari Safari um, has donated lots of money, and a lot of people have donated lots of money to keep these camps going. And uh, it, it's really, if ever there was God's work, Kevin, uh, the Ted Nugent Camp for Kids volunteers are truly doing God's work. So the more the more the people would visit our website and learn about it, uh, we've, we've changed people's lives. I know we have. Yeah, and speaking of Fred Bear, if you check out uh, Ted Nugent on social media, some great pictures and some uh, uh, great stuff there regarding uh, Mr. Bear. Before I let you go, uh, Ted, I, I got to mention this to you. My first exposure to you, and 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 we'll see if you even remember this. This is a blast from the past. Um, in the '80s, as you know, wrestling bigger than ever, and you were one of the rock stars featured when they had the uh, you know the whole rock and roll war to settle the score deal, the rock and wrestling connection with sure. uh, Hulk Hogan and Roddy Piper and Cindy Lauper and that whole thing. And we lost Roddy Piper a couple of weeks ago, uh, a guy that I uh, spoke to a few times and actually was working on doing a piece with, and uh, you know, unfortunately passed away uh, in his early '60s, uh, as we see with too many wrestlers, obviously. Um, um, but I remember you being on that uh, show, and you know they had all you guys uh, obviously on Hulk Hogan's side for the big fight, and you came on, and I remember you saying "Lights out, Roddy, lights out." And you know when Piper passed, I, I thought of you too because of that one thing. My friends and I would watch that video. I mean the VHS again and again and again and again till it burned out. I got to tell you, and uh, that was my first exposure. And then I said, "Wait, uh, Ted Nugent, let me check him out," and then was able to hear some of your music through that. So I hope that some young kids today, through a different way, will. You you know, check you out too from that standpoint because sometimes you stumble upon someone in the interesting ways, and there's a lot to be uh, said for that. Well, you know, being clean and sober, the real benefit is that you do remember everything. <laughs> yeah, you remember the people, and you remember the smiles, and the laughter, and the clenched fists, and you remember the letters, like I just got the other day from a bunch of U.S. Marines in Afghanistan who monitor my Facebook, and they they let me put it this way. Um, I've gotten thousands and thousands of communications over the years, Kevin, from families who I have steered their kids away from drugs and alcohol and away from crime and away from gangs because of the positive message that our camp for kids and my writings and our Spirit of the Wild show delivers. And what I deliver on stage for over 6,517 concerts, I mean, that's a, that's a lot of communication. But these heroes in Afghanistan nailed it the other day, and this is why the haters, um, their, their, their hate rolls off my back like hygiene off of Michael Moore. Um, these guys thanked me for fighting the enemies here at home and using the freedoms that they're willing to give their lives for and that their brothers have died to provide. And they, they told me that Ted Nugent, in their eyes, uses the freedoms and the rights that they're fighting for better than anybody they know. Um, I don't think I'm doing it better than anybody they might know, but if they say it, I'm not going to argue with them. And what it makes me realize is that when the greatest human beings stand with you, the, the punks don't have any impact on me at all except to further inspire me to keep fighting for hunting rights, fishing, trapping, and Second Amendment rights, and being the best that you can be, earning your own way, and being an asset to your family, your neighborhood, your country, and the good earth. And if that message offends anybody, you're on meth, 